Hi again. Today I will be sharing a dollar store upcycle. I actually started off with this paintbrush um, and then it just evolved into other things. Um, I did a little embellishment box and I also did some shaker envelopes. Um, so it's, we, we started planning this a while back. Um, I believe it was in January or February. Um, so I don't know if you're like me, but when I make something, I kind of get bored with it and want to move on to the next thing. And so I think that's what happened with this. I made it. Somehow my video got um, deleted, My the video when I made this. And so I decided, okay, well, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to make something else and record that. And... Um, so yeah, so today I'm going to share all of the things that I've made. Um, so this was the first one. It's just a paintbrush from Dollar Tree. Um, I painted the, the base of it, of course, and then I also painted the bristles. Um, I added a little made by me tag back here. Um, and then in the front, I just went to town and started embellishing and embellishing and adding and adding different layers of chipboard and these wood veneer pieces, these gorgeous butterflies that were sent to me by Janae. She is um, Happy Mel obsessed and they were just perfect for this project. Um, some rosettes that she sent to me as well. And so just a bunch of different chipboard pieces and pieces of ephemera and wood veneers. So this is really, really simple to do and it's just something cute that you could hang in your craft space or craft room. Um, so that was the first one I did and it's really just that simple. You just paint it and decorate it. Um, so that was the first one. And then I did this little embellishment box. Um, these, I had initially made one of these for Craft Purge. Um, she had a Halloween embellishment box swap that I joined and I wanted my embellishment box to look like the um, spell book from Hocus Pocus. Um, and then I just, started crafting and that spell book was a little plain so I decided to just make it look like a Halloween style book and um, so anyway that's where I came up with the idea for this um, and this is one of those little hardware toolkits that they sell by the picture frames at Dollar Tree so I just removed all of the hardware that was inside and I added some little um, wire beads that everybody is going crazy doing. Um, I made a few of those and then I also made these that I think are so cute. These little pom-pom. Um, I got these pom-poms at Hobby Lobby um, and they are just so so cute. So I decided to stick a little wire through them and make them into wire beads. Um, and I added some of these. I purchased these on Amazon. Um, they're just fluffy pom-pom charms. So that's, and then I also added some beads and pom-poms and some of these pins in here for the recipient to be able to make their own. Um, so this isn't really going to anybody. It was just an idea for this um, swap. Um, and so for the cover, I just did the um, the width of the of the box and basically just wrapped it around. I used a base cardstock, like a 110 pound base, um, and then I just layered paper over it and did some stitching. I used this um, ripped paper effect that we've seen all over Instagram. Um, Char Crane does the most beautiful ripped paper projects and um, and so anyway that's where I got that idea from um, I added a little tassel to it and then of course the ribbon for the closure and some pom-pom trim and so it's just a really cute idea to 
embellish the um, box a little more. And then I typically don't undo the ribbon. I just like to be able to slide this in and out. Um, so on the inside, I didn't decorate too much because you want it to be flat so that it'll close. I just added some, some more paper and um, some stickers to it. And then my final project um, are these... I don't know what you would call it. I guess they're like um, like goodie bags because I initially made this um, to stick some embellishments in or some store-bought goodies. Um, and I used a Dollar Tree shower curtain liner. Um, by the time I got to this project, we were already in quarantine. I had already created the paintbrush. I had already done the little cover for the embellishment box um and I decided okay that's not the project I want to share I want to share something else and like I said we're already in quarantine um so I have had a little bit more um craft time I guess um so now I'm on project three of this challenge and so anyway I found this shower curtain liner and I thought what can I make with this um I figured some of those um, shaker pouches that everybody is making. So I went ahead and gave it a go. And I have made so many and I still have so much of this material left. So um, I made this one. This one was actually my first one. And what I did is I just used a piece of cardstock. I cut it. Um, it was a 12 by 12 piece of paper. I cut it down to 6 by 6 by 12. Um, and I just used that outline to, um, to make the shape of this, to cut the shape out of this. Um, and then I just folded the bottom part over, stitched it. I stuck some uh, tissue confetti in here. And I added an eyelet to the front for the closure to string some of this yarn through it. Um, and added some beads to the bottom. I thought that was pretty cute, but it felt kind of flimsy to me. So then I did this one where I added paper to the inside of the shower liner. Um, and I think that this look I liked a little more. Um, again, I did the same style closure, uh, kind of like the policy envelopes. So just a button right here and some more string and you just wrap it around with a little dangle at the bottom. Um, I did the same thing. I used the same piece of paper, but this time I covered it in the shower liner and added some um, chunky glitter to it, which I like. I think out of all of the things that I filled these with, the chunky glitter is my favorite. Like I filled it with this tissue confetti. I made some um, with some sequins and some glitter, but I think just the simple chunky glitter is my favorite look. Um, so on the front, I decided to make a little pouch to stick some goodies in. Um, and I ended up sewing it at the top and then of course on this on the sides um, so it's actually two layers of the shower liner shower curtain liner and then I just stuck some sequins in there and so um, I made it to where you can just fold it like this and close it so that's a little one and then I decided I wanted a bigger one. So I made this one. Um, and again, I just used the shower liner for the shaker pocket at the front. Um, but on this one, I used a little bit of paper to do a trim along the edges. And um, I added this belly band to the top. Um, it opens up like so. And so it's the same style of paper, six by 12 
Um, I scored it at four, I believe, and that's what makes the flap right here. But on this one, I folded the shower curtain liner right here for the top part so that it doesn't have that seam, so that it's not like a wonky seam. Um, so it's just makes gives it a little bit of a more finished touch. Um, and so that just closes like that. So that's the difference with this one. It has this little trim or border along the edge and then also the belly band. Um, and then you can just slide it up. I added some Velcro to it as well. So it does Velcro open um, and shut. And then I added these little tassels to the top right here, which I think are really cute. So I love these two together. Um, I think that's such a cute little way to send some um, goodies. And then I made this one that is um, the same concept to the same style paper, six by 12 paper. I added the trim. I used the same style closure, kind of like a policy envelope closure. Um, it opens up like the same way, except on this one, I scored it at three inches, I believe. Um, it is a shorter flap. I did the same thing. I liked that folding the shower curtain liner so that you don't have that stitch at the top. So it's just stitched along the edges. Um, so I attached it and stitched it along the edge. Now this is very flimsy material, so it tends to move a lot. So I found that adding this border of paper on the side when stitching helped keep it in place. I also paper clipped it along all the edges and that helped it stay in place better and just give it a, a better finished look. Um, I did the same thing in here. I added some bigger pieces of tissue and some sequins. Um, and then on the back, I added um, a little pocket to this one so that you could add some more goodies in there. So it has this back piece as well and then a little pocket and it's stitched all the way around and then you can just add some more goodies in here. So that gives you room to add something in there, which looks so cute, all the colors. Um, and the same thing, like I said, the same closure. So that's another one. Um, and then here, <clears throat> And I'll share all the measurements down below um, in the description box. This is just, um, I went ahead and cut the pieces so that I could show you how I assembled it. Let me just show you that real quick. So this is what I start off with. Let me move this out of the way. And it's a six by 12 piece of paper. I rounded the edges of the area that will become the flap. So I think that just gives it a really cute um, look to it. Um, you don't have to do that, but I really think that that makes the flap look a little cuter. Um, <clears throat> and then of course, I, on this one, it, this is a four inch flap. So I scored it at the four inch mark folded it over and that's the base of my of my little goodie bag um, then I cut down the shower curtain liner and so when you purchase it it comes and these it's folded like this and so what I did is just take two layers and um, May cut it into a little square so that it can fit over the paper and leave this seam right here. Um, so I cut that and like I said, I make sure that the folded edge is facing the top of the bag because that's going to give you that better finished look on the first one that I had sewn it you can see that it is so wonky like the stitching because this is so flimsy and it moves so much under the uh, sewing machine needle 
it was it just it was hard for me to keep it straight um, so this is a better solution for that just fold it over and you don't have to um, sew along this edge and then these are the edges that I cut so what I do is this is going to be from lined from the edge to the top so that's going to tell you where your little opening is going to be to stick your goodies in and that's how I what I use to measure where to place it so basically just like so move it down a little paper clip it into place and that edge is now ready to be stitched so you can stitch along the edge right here and then of course you'll do the same to this side fold it over do the same thing um, put this paper on like so measure it make sure that the the shower curtain liner is lined up with the top piece and lined up with the bottom piece and that's your seam so you would stitch both sides then that is going to leave you the um, bottom part opening and that's where you will let me stick this on so this part right here is going to stay open and that's where you're going to stuff it with whatever you like glitter confetti some sort of sequence mix you stuff that in there as much as you like you fold this over and then you add the bottom piece and stitch along that side or that edge paper clip it so now you have all three edges stitched you turn it over you'll add the backing to cover all of that up all of the seam and stitching and so with this one right here I didn't add a backing so that you could see what it looks like without the backing so see I trimmed all of the plastic all of the shower curtain liner all of the excess I cut off or trimmed off and this is what it looks like after it's stitched and so then you would just add a piece of paper to back that up and just give it a more finished look so that's what this is right here that's what this paper is right here and then you can add a pocket back here if you'd like or just leave it like so and for the flap <clears throat> because this paper isn't double-sided that's why I had to add the the flap to it on this one I didn't have to add anything to it because the paper is double-sided so it just depends on what kind of paper you choose and um, what you decide how you decide to fold it so anyway for this one I went ahead and added this flap right here and that is it you would then add your closure you can add an eyelet um, you can add I did a, I hand stitched to the button onto the flap um, I initially had thought I could just use velcro but then I figured it would if I used velcro it would be pulling on the shower curtain liner and warp it so I decided not to use that and that's why I went with the policy envelope style closure um, and so yeah that is my project um, this one so far has been my favorite it just I think because it's not double-sided paper because it is um, just one-sided and then I had to go in and cover up the white it just gave it a more sturdy feel to it so this one is totally um, my favorite out of all of the the ones that I've created um, I also like the clear one a lot I think that's fun um, just to send some goodies in so again this was using a shower curtain liner I absolutely um, loved that idea I loved the idea of this pocket back here and I think it's just a really cute way to use 
what you have in case you don't have vinyl or um, what is it called uh, acetate so anyway um, I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed all of these projects um, and I hope you're staying home I hope you're doing your part and staying home and staying healthy and so I will see you on the next video thanks for watching bye